Now, a mystery that will show you Messiah in a new light, a revelation that goes back to the beginning to the Garden of Eden, the king of the curse. In the book of mysteries, the teacher and the disciple sit down in a desert valley surrounded by mountains. Between them is a little thorn bush. The teacher reaches for one of its branches, twists it off, holds up the thorn branch, and begins to uncover the mystery of the crown of thorns. Did you ever wonder why Messiah wore a crown of thorns? Think about it, a crown of thorns. There's nothing else like it in history. A crown is a symbol of royalty, power, kingship, wealth, glory, but it's usually made of gold or jewels, but now made of thorns? Why? The answer goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden when man fell. When Adam fell, God said, now the consequence of this curse is that the ground will bear thorns and thistles. It's a sign of the curse, a sign of a fallen world, and the thorns are a sign of man's dying. It's a sign of a creation that can't bear the fruit that it was called to bear. People who can't bear the fruit they were called to bear. Instead, it's bringing forth thorns, pain in the world, piercing, blood, tears, wounding, destruction. But when a crown is placed on the head of a man, he becomes king at that moment. At that moment, the weight of the kingdom rests upon him. So what is the mystery of the crown of thorns? They placed this on the head of Messiah. And when the crown of thorns was placed on his head, Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, becomes the king of thorns. He becomes the king of the curse. It, it, the thorns speak of pain and tears. So the crown of thorns means now this whole kingdom of pain and sin and curses are gonna come upon him. The pain and the tears of man, it, it's gonna fall upon him. The, the thorns speak of piercing, so he's gonna be pierced. And the thorns are linked to that, that curse of death. So the crown of thorns, when it's placed on his head, it ordains that Messiah is going to die. That's why it had to come upon him first. And then he's gonna die. He's gonna bear the weight of all our curses upon him. He becomes the Lord of thorns, the king of the curse. In other words, the Lord becomes the king over the pierced, the wounded people. He becomes king over the rejected and the rejection. King, Lord over tears, so that all who have fallen can come to him and find redemption because the one who wears the crown has the authority over all these things to turn sorrow into joy, to turn death into life, to turn thorns into blossoms. Listen, take your thorns, take your wounds, take your sorrows, take your, what, your rejections and bring it to him, whatever it is. Commit them to his authority. He wears the crown. That means he's not just Lord over, over the curse. He's Lord over your curse. He's the Lord over your sorrows. That's what the crown means. He's the Lord over your pain, over your wounds. He's the Lord specifically over your rejection, your abandonment, whatever it is in your life. He's the Lord over your tears. Commit it all to him. Bring it to him because that's what he's Lord of. Bring it to him and he will take your tears and turn them to joy. He'll take your wounds and turn them to healing. He'll take all those things that happen in your life and turn them to redemption. For the Lord says, I will turn your mourning into joy, your death into life. I will turn your rejection into love. Bring it to him because he's Lord over it. He is the Lord of the curse. Every sin you have, has the name of Jesus on it. Every sin you have.